In this video, we'll run through the safety questions, often known as the show me, tell me questions, which form part of your driving test. During your test, you'll be asked two questions about safety checks and controls on the car. One tell me question is asked at the start of the driving test, and the other show me question while you're driving. Asking one of the questions on the move is to assess your ability to adjust controls while you're driving, making sure you're able to pick an appropriate moment to make adjustments. When it is asked, the examiner will always say something along the lines of, when it is safe, I'd like you to show me whatever. That first bit, when it is safe, is a big clue. You don't have to do it straight away. Wait until you are happy that you have a nice clear piece of road to ensure you operate the controls safely. If you get either question wrong, or indeed both, you will receive one driving fault. You can only fail outright on the safety questions if you don't keep safe control of the car while adjusting controls for the show me question. So let's get started by looking at the various tell me questions you might be asked. This video illustrates the answers based on a 2015 Vauxhall Corsa E. Some of the answers will vary a bit if you are driving a different vehicle, but you'll still get a good overview here. We'll start with the three tell me questions which are under the bonnet. If you're going to be asked one of these, before you get in the car, the examiner will ask you to open the bonnet. The location of the main bonnet catch varies between cars, but it is always tucked out of the way so that you can't operate it by accident while you're driving along. It is usually low down at the side of either the driver or front passenger footwell, and in the case of the Corsa, it is the passenger side as shown. You pull this lever to release the primary bonnet catch. If you then go around to the bonnet, it would have popped up slightly, but it is still held securely by a secondary catch. If you crouch down and lift the bonnet slightly, it is usually a little easier to see this secondary catch. On the Corsa, it is just a little flap that you have to lift, and then the bonnet can be raised. With the bonnet fully released, you need to locate the stay so that you can hold it safely in place. On the Corsa shown, it is along the front of the engine bay, colour-coded yellow. Bring this up and place the hooked end in the socket on the bonnet, also colour-coded yellow. The bonnet is now safely secured so you can look underneath. With the bonnet raised, the examiner will warn you not to touch anything because some parts of the engine will be very hot and often dirty to touch as well. You just have to point things out and give a verbal explanation. The three things you can be asked under the bonnet are identify the brake fluid reservoir and explain how you would check the fluid level. Or identify the coolant reservoir and explain how you would check the fluid level or identify where you would check the engine oil level and explain how you would do it. On this model of Corsa, all the items are colour-coded yellow, so are fairly easy to find. Top left of the engine bay, as you look at it, is the brake fluid reservoir. In the centre is the engine itself, and the little yellow loop is the end of the dipstick that is used to check the oil level. At the front of the engine bay, by the radiator, is the coolant reservoir. The brake fluid reservoir has maximum and minimum marks on the side as shown. To check the fluid level, you would make sure it falls between these marks. This level shouldn't change between services. If it does, you need to get a garage to check the system for leaks. On the driving test, you don't actually need to check this level, you just explain how you would do so. The oil level in the engine is checked with the dipstick. To do the check, you would withdraw the dipstick and wipe it clean. Reinsert it fully and remove again to get a clean reading. At the end of the dipstick, there are always maximum and minimum levels indicated but the method varies a lot from car to car. Here it is by the flattened knurled section at the end, and the oil level should lie on this part. You should just explain to the examiner that you will clean the dipstick, take a clean reading, and make sure that the level lies between the maximum and minimum marks. Engines do consume some oil over time, so this level can change, but big changes can indicate a leak and should be checked out by a garage. The coolant reservoir on this generation of course it just has a cold fill line as indicated by the cold marking shown. More commonly, these reservoirs are marked with maximum and minimum levels, like the brake fluid. Having identified the reservoir, just explain to the examiner you would ensure that with a cold engine, the fluid level should be up to the cold marking. Just like the brake fluid, if you notice a drop in coolant level, this suggests that there might be a leak somewhere and should be checked out by a garage. The other tell me questions would all be asked once you are inside the car. There are two which could be asked about tyres. The first is, where would you find out the correct tyre pressures for the car, and how would you go about checking the pressures to make sure they are correct? Car manufacturers will recommend tyre pressures based on required comfort, handling and fuel economy, and the details will be in the vehicle handbook. 
Tire pressures can be checked with a tire pressure gauge. This could be part of a pump for home use, or on an air machine at a petrol station, or using a separate pressure gauge such as the one shown, which presses onto the valve so that the central cylinder expands out with the pressure so that you can read the current setting from the scale. For the purposes of the test it is sufficient to say that you would find the correct tyre pressures in the handbook and will check the tyres with a tyre pressure gauge. The second tyre question asks, what's the legal minimum tyre tread depth and what would you look for to ensure that their general condition is safe to use on the road? Tyre tread is the grooves which run around the circumference of the wheel and allow water to disperse from under the tyres to prevent aquaplaning. The legal minimum tyre tread depth is 1.6 millimetres. This can be checked with a tyre tread depth gauge, such as the one illustrated, where the green lip goes across the top of the tyre tread groove and the central spike is pushed down into it so that the current depth can be read from the scale. Many tyres also have wear bars within the tread grooves, which are approximately 2 mm high. Once the outer surface is worn nearly level with the bars, it's time to get the tyres changed. In terms of general condition, you want to check the sides of the tyres for significant damage, such as deep cuts or bulges in the rubber, which would require the tyre to be replaced. For the test, you just need to tell the examiner that the minimum tread depth is 1.6 mm, and you will check for cuts or bulges. Another two tell me questions cover the braking system. The first of these asks, how could you check the brakes are working before starting a journey? Obviously you could check when you first apply the brakes after moving away, but that's a bit late to find out about a major problem with the braking system. The idea is to check for the major problems before you move. What you need to do is start the engine and then push down on the brake. You should feel firmness as you push down, which is resistance from compressing the brake fluid. If you have been losing brake fluid through a leak, air will have replaced it in the braking system, which is much easier to compress and makes the brakes feel much spongier, or in extreme cases they may go completely slack. For the examiner, the ideal answer is simply to explain that you'd start the engine and push down on the brake, checking to make sure that it feels firm and not spongy or completely slack. The second brake-based question asks, how do you know if there's a problem with your anti-lock braking system? The electronics on a modern car continuously monitor the status of many systems, including the anti-lock braking. If a problem is detected, a warning light is displayed like the one shown. The symbology used on controls and warning lights in modern cars is standardised across all manufacturers. So this is a symbol you would see in any vehicle, although the exact location could vary. You should see the ABS light come on when you start the car up, and then go out as the system is checked. If it stays on, or comes on when you are driving, then there's a problem with the system. The next sequence of questions cover various aspects of the lights. You might be asked, how would you check the direction indicators are all working properly? Don't overthink this. Just explain to the examiner that you could put the indicators on, walk around the car and check that all the bulbs are working. This could be done either with the indicator stalk, in which case you do each side separately, or with the hazard light button, checking all the bulbs at once. To be really thorough, you could do both as there are differences in the electrical circuitry between the two methods. Or you could be asked, how could you check if the brake lights are working? Unless you have incredibly long legs, this gets slightly more involved. The simplest option is to explain to the examiner that you would get someone to help check the lights came on when you put your foot on the brake pedal. Alternatives could be to use reflections from a wall or garage door, or to weight down the pedal with something while you check for yourself. Similarly, you might be asked, how would you check if your dipped headlights and tail lights are working correctly? Once again, just explain that you would put the lights on and walk around the car to check. The main light controls on the courses are not on the stalks either side of the wheel, but are located to the right of the wheel, below the air vent. It's the big button on the right which does everything. In the picture, it is in the auto position, so the car is controlling the lights based on input from a light sensor. Turning the outer collar of the button one position to the right puts the side lights on and the second position to the right manually enables the dipped headlights. The tail lights come on automatically with the side lights. As we mentioned before, the symbology used on these controls is standard across all cars, so once you know what the little icons mean, it's easy to work out for other vehicles. Another light question asks, how could you turn on your rear fog light, and when are you legally allowed to use them? Once again, we go to the main light control. This time it's the two buttons in the centre that we're interested in. The top button turns on the front fog lights, and the bottom button 
the rear fog lights. You do need to have the dipped headlights on for the rear fog lights to work. Because rear fog lights can be very bright and dazzling for following drivers, we are only legally allowed to use them under certain conditions, which is when visibility is reduced below 100 metres. The simple explanation to give to the examiner is that you would ensure the dipped headlights are on, press the bottom button for rear fog lights, and you are allowed to use them when visibility is reduced below 100 metres. The last of the tell me questions about the lights asks, how would you switch your headlights from dipped to main beam, and how would you know the main beams are on from inside the car? On this Corsa, the main or high beam headlights are controlled on the same stalk as the indicators, which is pretty much standard across all cars. The dipped headlights can be flashed as a warning of your presence, shown as a dotted line with the main beam symbol, or turned on, shown as a solid line with the main beam symbol. So to switch to main beams, you would push the indicator stalk away from you. They can be switched back to dipped headlights, either by pushing away or pulling towards you. Once the main beams have been switched on, you can easily tell because a blue light illuminates on the dashboard. It is the only blue warning light you will see on the dashboard. And this is to make it very obvious that you have left your main beams on accidentally, as you may dazzle oncoming drivers. There are two more tell me questions to look at. Firstly, you might be asked, how could you check the power steering is working when you start the car? When the engine is off, the power steering is also off. It is almost impossible to turn the wheel, as the steering is very heavy. Once you start the engine, the power steering should also start up, so try moving the wheel to make sure it feels nice and light and easy to turn. Lastly, you might be asked, how would you position the head restraint so that it provides the best protection in the event of an accident? Many head restraints on modern cars are so large they don't actually need moving for most people, but you always want to make sure that the head restraint is centred in the middle of your head to provide the best protection in the event of any impacts. On this Corsa, the adjustment button is on the side of the head restraint, but it is often on the collar the head restraint goes through to mount onto the seat in other cars. Now we'll move on to the show me questions. This will be the question you are asked while you are driving. Just to repeat what was mentioned before, you do not have to do this straight away when the examiner asks. It is up to you to judge when it is safe to do so, so don't be afraid to wait a while if you are dealing with a complex road situation already. There are fewer of these questions and some of them will be very familiar to you already. Firstly, you could be asked to open and close a window. Pretty much everyone will be familiar with this. The electric window controls are on the driver's door. This Corsa just has electric front windows, and both can be controlled from here. Some cars will have electric windows in the rear as well, in which case these can usually also be controlled by the driver. The buttons are laid out as you would expect, passenger side on the left and driver's side on the right. They are rocker switches, so you can push down or pull up to lower and raise the windows respectively. You might be asked to turn on the dipped headlights. We looked earlier at the main light control, so just to reiterate, to put the dipped headlights on, you will just turn the outer collar all the way to the right. You could be asked to sound the horn. Pressing any part of the centre of the wheel will sound the horn. To avoid unduly affecting other road users, Make sure it is reasonably quiet around the car before you do this. Another option is to be asked to clean either the front screen or the rear screen using the washers and wipers. These functions are controlled using the stalk on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Pulling the stalk towards you will wash the front screen and pushing it away from you will wash the back screen of the car. In each case you will need to push and hold the control for a few seconds to get a decent amount of washer fluid onto the screen. The wiping is then done automatically, so you don't need to stop or start the wipers. Don't worry if you get it the wrong way around on test. As soon as you see what's happened, just do the opposite. You won't get a driving fault. The last two questions are about demisting the car. You might be asked to set the controls to demist either the front screen or the rear screen of the car. The heated rear screen can be controlled with the button shown, and pressing that is sufficient to answer how to demist the rear screen. This generation of Corsa also has a heated front screen, controlled from the same button. In principle, that should be okay as an answer to demisting the front screen. But as the icon on the button is for the heated rear screen, some examiners have been known to say that this is incorrect. So it's best to go old school and use the heating controls to demist the front screen. All you do is select the warm airflow, increase the fan speed, and select one of the positions which directs air towards the screen. Ideally the one sending air only to the screen, not to the feet as well. So that concludes our look at the show me tell me questions. 
In the video description, I'll include a link to the official answers from the DVSA so you can have an alternative view of how to answer the questions on your driving test.